Hello, Baptist. How are you doing this morning? Beautiful day out there. Beautiful day. Praise the Lord for it. Okay, announcements. Cohort class 9 to 11. 9.15, 9.45 prayer time, 10 o'clock Sunday school, 11.15 worship service, and after church, the potluck. They've been bugging us to bring uh, Butterfinger Pie again, so <laughs> we had to do that this time. Okay, announcements. Tuesday, 10 a.m. women's Bible study. Wednesday, 7 p.m. praise team practice. Thursday, 6 to 7.30 kids club. And be in prayer for Vacation Bible School, July 8th through the 12th. We will be having a meeting about that soon. When are you going to have a meeting about that? Uh, soon. Soon. <laughs> okay. We're going to have a meeting about this soon. Okay. Praises. One of Mike and Levy's twins are home. We're rejoicing over Nancy's healing. How's Bob doing? Is he getting along? Yes. In rehab and getting better, right? Okay, that's what we're looking for. Okay, prayer request. Prayer request. Vicki Childers, Andy's mom, Larry Crump and family, First Baptist Church of New Plymouth, uh, Josh, Bob, and even the twins, Bonnie's husband Rick, Anastasia's dad. Did you have something, Ellen? Yep, when it's terminal cancer like that, you just have to wait. Yeah. Give comfort where you can. And okay. Uh, ministry opportunities: Samaritan's Purse, Boise Rescue Mission, Blessing Bags, uh, DBS coming up, Falls Kids Clubs, Women's Devotionals, Women's Retreats, Prayer Sisters. Uh, most of these, they're all set up in the back, so you can take a look at those if you want more information on it or probably get a hold of Joe or somebody. Uh, any other prayer request? Everybody else is doing okay? All right. Oh, good, good. And it's Rich? Rick. I was close. You got the er right. got the er right. Er, ah. <laughs> Okay, glad to hear he's doing better. Anybody have anything else? Yes. I've got the phrase, um, I got the official letter, so I know exactly where I'm going to be next year. And just prayers for me to not get the Well, at least you know where you're going, Sarah. And I have a lot of peace about it. They've been very welcoming and very supportive. Okay, sounds great. Anybody have anything else? Any anniversaries? Any anniversaries coming up? Any birthdays? Oh, no, Diane, you're having another birthday? Oh, what's that? Oh, an anniversary. An adversary? George, I don't know what you've been doing, but I don't think she's happy about it. <laughs> 37 years. That's great. That's great. Any birthdays? Your sister has a birthday. Is she here? No. Oh. How old is she going to be? Ten? <laughs> well, we'll have to wish her a happy birthday as well. 
Nobody else? Okay, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. And to be able to be in your house and worship you, we just ask that you be with these prayer requests, dear Lord. You know the need and, and each individual who needs your touch this morning, dear Lord. We just ask that you be with the pastor as he brings the morning message. Bless our fellowship time together as we have our potluck after the service. We give it all to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You know, Easton is such a cool kid. Today, I'm his friend. The first time that I really got to know him, he told me his dad was going to kill me. But I don't think that's the case today. So whatever, we, we've moved past that. <clears throat> oh, man. He's definitely a man's man. There's not a doubt that little feller. You know, that little feller is, is, is uh, one in the world that gives you hope that tomorrow might be a little better. It might be, we're going to be okay. It's going to be little fellers like him that will make sure that we're all okay. Um, we didn't put it in the bulletin, but thanks for everybody who came out and helped strip this other part of the roof. We got some of the shingles up there, so we're going to start getting those on. And so, uh, I'm not sure when, but soon. I was worried that the rain and wind, but shoot, they rained out really hard and the wind blew like crazy the other day and that, and that paper stayed up there pretty good. So, I don't know, maybe six months, a year, I don't know. We'll, we'll get it. No sense in rushing something like this. <clears throat> Hope everybody had a good week. Want to welcome our, our friends from, uh, from Atlanta. Generally, I didn't think that there was enough oxygen down here for them, but here they are, and here they're breathing, so it's good to see you guys. I hope that you can make yourselves at home, is, you know, here just like we do when we go, go to Atlanta. Um, let's see, I've just got done finishing up with the uh, Rich Relationship series, and uh, I really, I really... I don't know, I just really hope that after all this time and whatever, that the things that we do in our day-to-day -day life and, um, and in our relationships and all this stuff is that um, it, it's all building on one of these things so we can have that rich relationship with God that I believe that we're all desperately really wanting and seeking. Even if we don't know that's what we want, that it is what we want. And so what, what does that mean is that, you know, we, uh, to me what it means is that if my activities, if, if what I'm doing is not falling in one of these three categories, then I have to weigh out, is it really worth doing? Does that make sense? And that's just not in church life, but that's in all of life. Um, because it, we can, we can truly have a rich relationship with God. There is so much freedom in being a born again child of the God Most High. And so many people miss that. And I think they miss it because they don't understand that God wants a relationship with us. That's what He desires. He, he's not a God that just, you know, as Steve Brown said, and I shared this last week, God's not mad at us. So many times we walk around like we have a God who's mad all the time, and He's not. He might grin and chuckle to himself and roll his eyes, but he's not mad at us. He loves us. 
and uh, he forgives us. He knows because of the, the life that Jesus had on earth. He knows what we're going through. And so and he shows compassion and mercy and uh, forgiveness. And uh, I don't know. I just think that uh, for me, if I'm not doing things that are going to enhance that relationship with God, then I need to figure out something else to do. You know, so hey, if you guys can hang, just bear with me a little bit this morning. I want to talk about another topic that so many Christians have not developed. And that's really what this is. Um, I've talked to some people who go, oh, no, man, I, I gave my heart to Jesus and boof, man, it all was magically changed. And, and I, praise God for them. Praise God for you if that happened to you. Not my experience. Okay, it's not my experience. It was a bit of process. It's a process. Now my salvation was instant, but but my heart changed. All of the things that are good about God fearing people, it, it's a process because I have so much of the world in me yet. I have so much of me in me yet that it has taken a long time just to me it seemed like just to get a little a little ahead of time a little bit ahead but you know what i want to tell you what i want to talk about today is is, is by far the most important weapon that every born again child of god has at their disposal okay bar none don't matter not not the devil not man not Beast, nothing can keep us from praying to our God. You know, Dr. Gregory Frizzell wrote, and I think this here is pretty, pretty important to understand that. And he wrote a book called How to Develop a Powerful Prayer Life. You know, he states in that book that we must view our daily prayer time as a relationship with God. And not some legalistic duty or discipline or something that we do so we can check it off the list. This is, it's more than that. Um, it's more than that. I really like Joellen had a speaker who come to the church years ago. And, uh, and, 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 she, and she spoke to the ladies. And she had a saying that's always stuck with me. And I think she's made a lot of, speaks to a lot of, having her here was a privilege if I remember right. Because she, she usually speaks to a whole lot more than 12 people. And, uh, but she did, she came here that, that night. But she has a saying that, that she has, is, and the saying is, is we get to, right? Now I don't know what the whole thing about we get to is. But I really, I really this last week was thinking, uh, what Gregory Frizzell had said is that it's not a legalistic duty. And Joan, what is her name? Joan Endicott? Joan Endicott says, hey, we get to. We need to look at our prayer time and the time that we spend with the Lord is something that we get to do. You know, there's not a whole lot of people, uh, other religions and other things out here where they get to go to the foot of their Savior, to good to go to the foot of, of, their, uh, of their God, if you will, and communicate. God desires in His heart that we talk to Him. Um, and I'm telling you, prayer is one of the first things in having a rich relationship with God. It's like the baby steps of baby steps. It's the one thing that, that everybody needs to do. And you know what? Sadly to say, I don't think, I don't think we do that much. And, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not going to speak for you guys, but I know for me, for years, I had a pattern. Okay? You get up, you do life, and when you've gotten a squeeze, whoo, oh yeah, that's right, I got a God I can go to. Right? So we're using him as like a lifeline, which is okay. He is a lifeline. But there's so much more to it than that. Um, so much more to it than just, uh, just, um, he's just, he's there when I need him. In this book, How to Develop a Powerful Prayer Life, Gregory Frizzell lays out a pretty prayer patterns, he calls them. They're prayer patterns. And, and, uh, and, um, yeah, 
Every one of the patterns develops the next and develops the next. And, uh, and at the end of the deal, day, if you follow his pattern, you truly have a rich prayer life. You have truly developed a prayer life that covers all the bases. You know, like the first base he talks about, and I'm going to talk about today, is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is being, being, having gratitude is what I'm calling it today. But being thankful is huge. It is absolutely amazing what happens when we, when we change when we, you know what, when we get up in the morning, and instead of whipping out everything, oh, God, give me this, God, give me that, God, give me this, saying, God, thank you. Oh, my goodness, thank you. Thank you. And I know when I first heard this, I'm like, man, I don't have that much to be thankful for. Right? But so untrue. So untrue. And what an awesome opportunity we have. Uh, what an awesome God we serve who lets us do that, who lets us come to him. And it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much money you don't have. Listen, he wants to hear from you. Okay? doesn't matter whether you've got three, three months. Or where's that little baby at? There was a little baby in here that's got like a hundred years. Right? It don't matter. He wants to hear from us. And um, again, as it would seem to work out, it wasn't my intention, but it just seemed to. Um, prayer is definitely one of the key components to having a rich relationship with God. Prayer is as simple as talking to God. I'm not sure about the right or wrong ways to do it, other than I always want to point these few things out that I've gleaned from the Bible. Um, is number one is our motive. Why are we pray? See, when I would pray on Thursday night after being put in jail on Wednesday night, every Wednesday night or every Thursday you wake up praying, okay, my motive was wrong. Because as soon as he let me out, guess what? I kind of forgot about him until next Thursday. Okay, because I needed something. Our motives need to be right. You know, in James 4, 3, he says, You ask and you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives. So that you may spend it on your pleasures. Therefore, as an early Christian, I'm praying that the Lord would give me like a billion dollars so I could go buy my own island. And just be away from everybody. Um, I'm pretty sure that was one of those days that he either rolled his eyes or just chuckled. Because it, it had nothing to do, me get the billion dollars had nothing to do except for me, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. You guys will be fine. You know. Listen, we should not stand and have long, lengthy prayers as the other one on the street corners for everybody to see how holy you are. I mean, listen, we've all met these people. We've all met him. Matthew 6, 5 says, Whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. If you, want, if, if you make a big deal about everybody hearing and seeing and you have all the right words, what I'm gathering from this... Is that your reward when we all clap, when we all say amen? That's a wrong motive. That's a wrong heart to go before the Lord. Um, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, he tells us to pray consistently. And some of your translations will say pray without ceasing. So it's something that we should be doing all the time with the right motive. All the time. There's nothing too big, too small, too little, too unimportant that the God doesn't want to hear from us. Okay? The wife might be bringing a bunch of stuff to me and I'm like, yes dear, yes dear, yes dear. But when she takes that stuff to the Lord, he's, oh wow, Joellen. Okay? Nothing is too small or too big, too unimportant or too important to take to him. Listen, either way, to develop a rich relationship with God, we are encouraged to develop a powerful prayer life. I might want to throw in the mix here because it, I because I can and I do this all the time. <laughs> 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 
Henry's going to really wish he was here today because this is going to be the shortest message we've ever preached. <laughs> All right, let me get the last. I might throw in the mix if I can and to write this down. If you're not, if you're not writing anything else down I, 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 I would, that I'm saying, I want you to write this down. And to have a powerful Bible reading habit. Reading your book and on your knees to the Lord go together. I'm going to tell you why. I've met a lot of people who got really good praying folk, but they haven't got a clue who they're praying to. If you're not reading the book, you won't have any idea who you're praying to. You don't know who God is. You know, all you know is maybe what the radio guy said it is, or maybe what Pastor Dallas said it is. Listen, there's more. God has so much more for you than anything that I can that I can offer. So, develop a good, get a good, easy Bible to read. There's, man, for the really smart people that have really smart $100 word Bibles, man. For us simple people, they have the message Bible. I mean, there's no reason why we don't have a, a Bible that we're reading. Um, <coughs> um, let's see, if you've been out here at San Hall Baptist Church for any length of time at all, you know that I encourage everyone, young and old, big or small, to read your Bible and pray. And we have encouraged our, our Thursday night kids class to bring a Bible. And we want, them to, we want them to have a Bible they can read. And then we're going to, uh, when we're reading the Bible, we're expecting them to follow along with us in the Bible. You know, one of the things that children are, children are honest as the day is long, man, I'm telling you. If you really want to know what mom and dad are like, just hang out with the kids because they'll definitely tell you all about it. They'll tell you exactly how mom and dad are. You know, they really will. You know, I was visiting um, not long ago with a young lady who is just now starting to read the Bible. And she's a, uh, she's a friend, or she's the granddaughter of a friend of mine. And I was really hoping that she'd be here today, but they're not. Um, oh, well that worked out not very well. got this one twice I knew I didn't have 19 pages of a message <laughs> dang it anyways this young lady started reading the Bible and she texted me the other day and she says I got lots of questions about it she's kind of excited about it uh, she told me that that sometimes she gets really confused though about what she's reading and I wish I had been quicker to the punch than I was because I was like, oh, well, that's, that's too bad. I should have suggested this, um, that she first pray before and after each reading. What kind of pastor doesn't tell somebody who's just learning the, how, to, how to read the Bible, well, why don't you pray? Well, I did. I just wish I'd been a bit, quick, a bit quicker. Um, you know what? We pray and ask God to show us what it is that um, show us is that what we are reading and why should I care about it? We should ask the Lord for that. Lord, I'm, I'm reading this stuff. I'm reading John one. What's the so what? Um, listen, I know that's how it all started way back for me. Is I would pray, read, and pray. Application came later. For me, anyhow, it did. Okay, you know, you know there's no sense in rushing things. I always thought baby steps were the best way for me to, to, to get there. But pray, read, and pray. If we can get into that habit, I think you will be absolutely amazed what the Lord will tell you, what the Lord has to show you. The so what's are there everywhere they're in the Bible. 
If you're in the Old Testament, the big so what's that you'll find? They're in the New Testament. <laughs> They're there. It, it all matters. It all, it's all, it all matters. Anyways, um, this morning let's look at three ideas um, that don't matter if you're an old hand or reading and praying or just starting out. These principles will help to put all the pieces to the puzzle together that you're looking for. It will help you to see and measure God's working in your life. That's important. Sarah sings a song from time to time. Remember, we need to remember. We need to examine. I think it's okay for once in a while for us to, to look back and ask the hard questions. What, what, am I a better today than I was yesterday? And be honest. I know there are seasons in my life I ask, am I better today than yesterday? And the answer is absolutely not. No. I keep thinking of Troy Wench, who kept saying, I thought you'd be better by now, but you're not. You're worse. But then there are other times when I can say clearly, yeah. Yes, I've walked through this storm, not the first storm I've walked through, but I've walked through this storm a lot better than maybe the last storm I walked through. That's how we want to measure this, this out. Um, not does it hurt or not hurt, this or that, because life hurts. Life is hard. It really is. Um, so anyway... The first thing I want to talk about is, well, I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about guidance, gratitude, wisdom, and guidance. And the first one I want to talk to is gratitude. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, so often, folks come into my office wanting to know what God's will is for their lives. What is God's will for my life? What is God's will for my life? I want to get in the meat. i got to figure this out. As a matter of fact, the library shelves are full of good books written on the subject. However, however, you don't need to spend all that money on good books. Okay, because I just told you. I didn't just tell you. First Thessalonians 5.18 told you what God's will is for every one of our lives. Um, we just need to read it some. Listen, God desires us to be thankful people, to show gratitude toward himself, and listen, and, toward, and, and towards and for others he has surrounded us by. Be thankful. I, I think of the people who the Lord has me surrounded by today, and it's easy for me to be thankful because I'm not going to say none of them. But the group of people who the law I used to be surrounded by would steal my tools, okay? They would steal my wallet, spend what little money I had, okay? They would lie to me. They snatch your old lady from you the first chance they get. These are my friends, man, my buds. Right? But since I got saved and started hanging out with a different group of people, Okay, I'm not saying that I haven't had my, my tools stolen, but not generally by my friends. Okay, I have so much to be thankful to the Lord for. So much. Some people say, well, man, I, I, I've told you guys this a bunch of times. It just fits this topic so well. In the first half of the church, after I first got saved and started going to church, they'd have Sunday night, Sunday night prayer meetings. Which I think are important. <laughs> Joanna just had a baby, so she didn't get to go. She stayed home with the kids. I went on Sunday night. And uh, this one Sunday night, uh, um, man, there had to be 40 people in the church on a Sunday night. I'm like, wow, that's a new Plymouth, Idaho. My goodness. And they had a uh, prayer meeting. Okay, let's bring all our wants and hurts and stuff to God. How about if we do that? Everybody's there. It was three hours long. It was a great day. The pastor's so excited. He said, well, good. Next week, come by. Come back, and we're going to talk about um, and pray a, a prayer of Thanksgiving. I think there was ten people. Okay? The, the, the thing lasted for 30 minutes. People could not spend any time saying, ooh, I am thankful for. Thank you, God, for 
Isn't it, you know what? And even as a brand new young believer, it kind of broke my heart. Like, oh my gosh. They're right. What in the world do I got to be thankful for? I have unruly kids. My wife barely likes me. You know, I have mean bosses. What in the world do we have to be thankful for? I could have bought into that really easy. Right? But I'm going to tell you one thing. And this was right about the time that we were watching the war on TV. I'm thinking, you know what I can be thankful for? Is that I live in the United States of America, baby. We live here. We have, look, you notice that we have all our doors open. At least we had that one open, so maybe someone sh got cold and shut it. Lisa, did you get cold? We live in the United States of America. I, I, I make, not everybody might agree with what we do or say, but nobody's here trying to stop me from doing and saying whatever we want. We can worship God any way we want. I'm going to tell you right now. Well, I've been watching this deal called Jesus, the Game Changer. There's three seasons of this. And it's about, listen, there are a lot of places in this world who do not even come close to having the luxury that we have. There are places in the world that do what we are right now. They see this many cars out in the parking lot. The law is coming over to visit for sure. Okay? Here's what's not allowed. They don't want us doing it. Listen, I live in the United States of America. If I get mad at somebody I'm working for, I can quit. I can quit. Not every place that you live can you do that. They give you a job and that's what you're going to do. I have lots to be thankful for and so do you. I have a wife who stuck with me for 128 years almost. What are you laughing at? It hasn't been all easy. That first hundred years was a booger. The second 28 is going pretty good. I have kids. I mean, I have friends. I have a place to live. I have food in my belly. I'm telling you. Those are so sound really simple. Tiny things. But you know, even the people who live on the street on the average in the United States of America, the poor people, the poorest of the poor, have more money in their pocket than about 85% of the world population. Isn't that something? We think we call them poor. Man, they would be they'd be off pretty well in some other countries. We have a lot to be thankful for. We have a church, nice church building. Good friends from the mountains who led us up there once a year. Let us take over their town. Even tell us where the fishing holes are at. I got to tell you, Gene, I thought you guys were lying to me the first few years. We'd coming up in June and July. And you guys were saying, we'd say, well, where can we catch a fish? You say, the water's too fast. You can't catch fish right now. I remember telling Bobby and Joel and everybody, I was like, those guys just don't want me to go fishing in their fishing holes. <laughs> they know where the fishing's at. And that first year we came up in August or later on, in the, maybe back only they were right. The water wasn't going near as fast and the fish were biting. We have every reason in the world to have gratitude in our hearts. As a matter of fact, that's God's will for your life. He doesn't tell me, Dallas, my will for your life is, is to have like $2,000 in your pocket at all times. I would be cool if it was, but it's not. He says, Dallas, what I'm going to do to you is I'm going to change your heart so you'll be thankful for what you do have and what you got. And I can even be thankful today for some of the things that I don't got. We all heard that country and western song, right? I thank God for unanswered prayers. I mean, how many people can say that? Ooh, I look back and it's like, okay, man, that would have not turned out the way I was thinking. I have a lot to be to be thankful for. Psalms 104.4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. 
Again, Dr. Frizzell tells us that, that we are to start to develop our prayer journey. We should start each prayer time with thanksgiving and praise to God. If for no other reason, I have got to give praise to the Lord because he'll allow me to be in his presence, number one. But no matter what happens here on earth, he has got a bigger, better plan for me later. Why would I not be grateful for that? I'm telling you, it's changed my heart when I'm seeing, ooh, you know what? And the older I get, too, the older I get, the, 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 I'm thinking, ah, it's getting closer and closer, man. I can't wait to find out what everybody's dying to find out. It's amazing how our hearts and attitudes change when we start looking at all the things we have to be thankful for. Sarah leads us last Sunday and count your blessings. I think it was a, count, count your blessings. Maybe it was the Sunday before. And, and I'm not much of a, of a hymner. But uh, count your blessings one by one and see what God has done. You think, woe is me. When we stop and start counting them. Man, Christians, we don't have much to be woed for. Yay is me. Yea is me. Happy is me. Because God has got, got our back. Psalms 118.24 says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. If the sun's up there today, it's because God said, Son, why don't you rise today? Okay? If it's all cloudy and ugly out there, that's because the Lord said, Man, let's give these... Give these guys a break. Whatever. It's all, all, all on him. So instead of whining about it, I can remember being in Gillette, Wyoming, working on a, in a drilling rig, and it was like 50 below zero, and all these people from California and other parts of the world are there, and they're whining, whining, whining. Evidently, it's cold. And I'm telling them, man, if you just don't matter. Yeah, it's cold. I know it's cold. I'm out here too. But uh, let's just do what we got to do. We get, we're going to have to do what we have to do, whether it's cold or whether it's just right. So let's just do what we have to do. Just do what we have to do. Be glad that we got a job. <clears throat> Some have asked, and this preacher was one of them long ago, what do I have to be thankful for? My life's a mess. I struggle with my job. I struggle in my, my relationships. Is that, um, is it that I have to be grateful for? What do I have to be grateful for? Um, there's a little prayer I want to share. It says, I stand before you this morning. That if you, if you just start talking with God and thanking him for the privilege to live in this country, in this state, in this community. Thank him for the friends that you do have. Praise him, praise him for the job you got. Many, many people in this world have no jobs, no real friends, and, real, and really not even an opportunity to get any. If we meditate on the things that we have and, and don't have, I believe that you will find the same thing that I have found. Plenty. Plenty. That's not the prayer. Evidently, I deleted it when I mixed it, all the rest of it up. The second thing that I think that we can be going to the throne for, that we may be going to our God for in prayer, is wisdom. Is wisdom. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Listen. I think that there's a lot of Christians that I know who need to be getting that and asking the Lord for wisdom, okay? Because it don't appear that a whole bunch of have much. We need to be asking the Lord, Lord for wisdom. The Bible talks about foolish wisdom that that many men and women are running after the wisdom of this world. In fact, worldly wisdom is called futile. The wisdom of this world is called futile, having no useful result. It's, un, it's ineffectual. The wisdom of God is what we should desire. What is God's idea of how this, um, this or that should work out? We see this played out in, in um, the cultures, wars that are going on in every developing country. For sure in our country. 
um, world's wisdom says same-sex marriage is okay. God wisdom tells us that marriage is between a man and a woman. World's wisdom tells us uh, tells that a woman can abort her unborn child. God's wisdom says that every life is valued. These are just a few examples. There's so many, many more, and they're in the Bible, waiting for us to discover them. Waiting for us to discover God's wisdom and not worldly wisdom. There is such a difference. And this, this, these documentaries that we're watching, they're even pointing out, I was shocked to hear it. They're even pointing out that, that the worldly wisdom for so many years has said that pastors and all these people need to have a doctorate and all these master's degree before they can come and do what the Lord has called me to do with, with, with barely a high school education. Okay, world wisdom says we need to be educated, 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 educated. God's wisdom says let me educate you. Let me show you. <clears throat> you know, James, um, James 4, 2 says you desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. Ask for wisdom on high. I'm telling you, he'll sh give it to you. He will show it to you. But we got to ask. And then we got to listen to what he says. And I don't think that God is such a weak, tiny little God that... Because I know I've said, well, Lord, I ain't going to do that. Okay. Don't have to. Sooner or later, guess what? I'm doing it. Because it's his wisdom. It's his will. It's, his, it's coming from him. Right? You need to ask. This passage says so much about the frustrated Christian today. We do and do and things don't ever really work out the way we envisioned. But James would ask you this. Oops. James would ask you this simple question. Have you prayed about it? Have you prayed about it? How many of us have just been frustrated to no end? And when we're honest with ourselves, we haven't taken it before the Lord. We've taken it everywhere else. We put it on social media. I'll complain to the neighbors. I'll complain to the wife. I'll come yell at the kids. I'll yell at the lady checking out my groceries. But I don't take it to the Lord. Simple question. You have not. Most likely because we've asked not. That's the thing about being a Christian. That so many have missed. They think they know better than God. So if they do pray, it's more like they are asking God to bless their idea. To bless their wisdom. <clears throat> or bless their plans, so to speak. Instead of seeking God's plans and God's wisdom. James 3.17 tells us, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. That's God's wisdom. That's the wisdom that he offers us. Proverbs 2.6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 3, 13 and 18 says, Blessed is the one who finds wisdom, the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. She is more precious than jewels. Not you. Well, anyway. And nothing you desire can compare to her. Long life is in her in her right hand in her left hand are riches and honor her ways are are ways of um, pleasantness and all her paths are peace that's wisdom that's wisdom have you ever done something and then can't sleep at night because you're so full of anxiety chances most likely are is that we're not in God's will chances 
I got to be honest, I know sometimes when they asked us to be pastors out here, there was a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of anxiety. But, but we knew. That's when we first realized just what kind of humor the Lord really has. Here's a prayer I didn't, um, as an example, that I didn't delete. Um, this is a prayer that says, In the journey of life, I often find myself at a crossroads, faced with important decisions that shape my path. I humbly come before you, seeking your divine guidance and wisdom to make choices that align with your will. Those are the kind of prayers that I think God hears, that we should be asking. And then we should be listening. And don't be afraid of what we hear. He'll show you. He'll he'll let you know. He'll talk to you. I know so many people that the Lord is trying to talk to. We ask Him for this and He tells us and we go, yeah, not that. Yeah, not that. But the more we pray, the more we seek, the more we ask, the more He comes to this. It's the same thing. Maybe it's that. Even being a pastor in San Hall Baptist Church, we wanted to go to the soup kitchen. And the Lord said, no, soup kitchen, no, soup kitchen, no. Aha, keep asking, San Hollow. say if you ask he says he'll give it he wants to it's his desire to show you Isaiah 30 21 it says whether you turn to the right or to the left your ears will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk in it when we first come out here we were laughing stock of our families and I think in some instance we kind of still are. I know a lot of people in the other churches couldn't believe it. Dallas? The Lord called Dallas? You know, my sister, she asked us for years. She doesn't anymore. But for years she would say, oh, are you still on your Jesus kick? Okay. But, but listen, we kept hearing the Lord say, yeah, you're on your Jesus kick, buddy. Yeah, go this way. Go this way. I'll tell you a good example. <clears throat> you know, when my dad when my dad passed away, him and I are out in the out in the garage, um, in, in between his coughing fits, and uh, I was supposed to get my dad's boat. Okay, and, but when my dad passed away, evidently I was the only one that he told that to. Because it didn't happen. My mom wasn't giving it up. My, I, can I, today I see why mom wasn't going to do it. But nonetheless. Uh, but I remember I was so mad. I was so mad. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed because I told Bobby. I told other people. When I come back from Wyoming, man, I'm going to have this awesome fishing boat. And it didn't happen. 
But I remember the day in Gillette, I'm driving around trying to, I mean, the place changed so much. I'm trying to find our, my old driving routes, and man, you could get lost doing that. And, and some of them that you used to go on to, they can't anymore. I was so frustrated. But just as clear as you can hear me right now, I'm telling you, I heard the Lord. Because I'm having a conversation with the Lord, and I can't really put that one on paper. Uh <laughs> But I heard the Lord tell me as clear as you can hear me talk to you right now. He says, Dallas, I have something different planned for you. I said, yeah, but. No, I have something different planned for you. This isn't what I have planned for you. This isn't what you have planned for you. And the Lord didn't want me to have a boat. He didn't want me to have a nice diesel pickup because he said I have other plans for you even when I went behind his back and went and got him anyways they didn't last you know why because that wasn't what he had planned for me I had to be okay with that I had to be okay with that and I am okay with that today I am okay with that today and it's a frustrating lesson to learn and I'm not going to stand up and tell you that I wasn't hurt, that I wasn't mad. But today, I get it. I get it. I get it. Because the Lord has over here whispered in my ear forever. This way, Dallas. You come over here and come this way. You keep walking down this path. What I have planned for you is down at the end of this road. And I'm so glad that we did. I'm so glad that we did. We have friends and family in Idaho that if, if I wouldn't have listened to them, I would have never, we would have, we would have lost out. We would have lost out. You know, I send a message to these kids and everybody who's, who's, who's a part of this deal. And, you, and I say this, I mean, you get your birthdays and stuff, but I mean it so much. I mean, you guys are different makers. Do you know that? You guys make a difference in people's lives. You have made a difference in my life. And that's because the Lord said, Dallas, come this way. I haven't got that planned for you, man. I got something better planned for you. Now, I still go fishing. Okay? I got a little dinghy. And it seems to be okay that I can have that. However, I mean, I about killed us the other day. This is probably why the Lord is telling me, you don't want, you, you, you're not going to have a boat, dude, because you're not responsible enough with one. I mean, with a little John boat, I about killed my son and I. I mean, I couldn't believe it. There wasn't even motor on it. Anyway, ask the Lord for guidance. If you sincerely ask with the right motive, he'll show you. And it might not be what everybody else wants for your life. I've spent a season being frustrated because I see something in Ed that evidently Ed don't see in himself that the Lord don't want him to do. And I can be frustrated. No, I don't want you to do the Lord's will, Ed. I want you to do mine. But don't do mine. Listen to the Lord. Now, he might, he might use us. You know, he might use people in our lives to, to speak, speak truth to us. But seek Him. Seek Him. If we can seek Him, um, even if we have to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I want, I don't understand this gratitude thing. I want to be happy. I want to be thankful. I want to see you, all the goodness the Bible talks about you. I want to see it. He'll show you. You'll get it. But you got to take the first step. For wisdom, if you really want to know what, what, what God's desire is for our lives, and we should. Jesus Christ at the, in the garden right before he went to the cross, he's praying to the Lord, man, if there's another way, now is the time to show me. But listen, not my will, but your will. That's wisdom. That is pure wisdom. Is what is his will? He says that he will, he will, his plans aren't to hurt you. His plans aren't to, to squish you. His plans are to, to prosper you. His 
plans are to, to make to have you have you have a life of joy. To have a full, abundant life. Jesus says that he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. That might look different for each one of us in here. But each one of us, if, if we will allow him, he will show you that abundant life. That's where wisdom comes from. And ask for guidance. Ask for guidance sincerely. We've been asking people for VBS help and Sunday school help. We get a lot of I'll pray about it. I want you to pray about it. You're trying to trick me. Trying to use my words against me here. I've asked a fellow to be, to be praying about being a Sunday school teacher, and it's been like five years. He is deep in prayer. Get on your hands and knees and pray. Learn how to talk to God. And you won't offend him, like I said. You won't offend him. You won't hurt his feelings. Um, you might be surprised what happens. You might be surprised what he shows you. You might look back a year from today and say, oh my gosh. I did not go through this storms of life like I did the year before. Why? telling you it's because that means you become obedient to your father in heaven he wants our communication he wants to talk to us makes sense doesn't it none of us in here can have any kind of relationship at all any kind of friendship at all if we're not talking to one another we got to talk and God's open 24 hours a day I am generally open from 5.30 to 10. <laughs> he is open 24 hours a day. And you can bring anything to him. He tells us in, in, in 1 Peter, I believe it is, that we can cast our cares upon him because he cares for you. And I think that makes us pretty fortunate people. Pretty fortunate people who has a God who says, come to me just as you are, man, but bring it all. Bring it all, and I'll show you. I'll show you. And if you're here today, and you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, I want to encourage you to do it. Don't know what to, the, the, we don't know what the afternoon's going to bring. I want to see everybody in this room, in this building, on this block in heaven with me one day and there's only one way that's going to happen Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the Father except through me that's a bold statement isn't it it's a bold statement and I'm going to hang on to that statement because I believe it's true bow your heads please Father God thank you thank you for knowing us so well and loving us so much that you, uh, you know, we're just so desperate. We're so desperately needy and left on our own, man. I mean, it doesn't have to look very far or very hard to see what we can turn things into. I thank you for this program that you, that you turned me on to the other day about the missionaries and how it hasn't always looked like the missionaries have done great things around the world but when we when we step back and look at it from a hundred years later it, it, you were there working in the, and the what you had planned and desired seemed to have, have come to tuition in all all these places I thank you for allowing us to be in a country where we can openly worship you. We can go to any bookstore, well, should almost any bookstore, and buy a Bible, buy your words, your love letters to us. Lord, I, pray, I, I praise you for being a God who, who, who uh, will open up the eyes of my heart and my ears of my heart so I can see and hear you and what your will is. And Father, I thank you for, for having a plan already figured out for us. And you are, are, are willing to not beat me up because maybe I've, I've taken the left when I should have went right. But you're quick 
to whisper in my ear and to nudge me back on the right course. Thank you for being a guiding light in my life, in the life of these people. Everybody who, who, who will let you, you're not a respecter of person. Another thing that I praise you for, what a mighty God you are. If there's people here today who need to know you in a special way, I pray, Father, that you will continue to knock on the door of their hearts. Now you will knock louder and louder and louder until they open up the door and say, come on in. Let's see what this is all about. Father, I, I, I pray for those who have maybe, you know, maybe they know who you are, but they don't got that rich relationship. I pray, Father, that, that things will happen in their lives, that they too will open up the door a little wider and, show, and, and, and you can show them just how much they can trust you. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for, for having our best intentions in mind. The, the definition of love is having the other person's best interest. And Father, you most definitely seem to have our best interest in mind. So thank you. I thank you for these people. May you just bless them this week. As I pray every Sunday, Father, and, and almost every day for them, that you would give them an unquenchable hunger to be in your word, to be on their knees talking to you, and to hear in you. And then I pray, Lord, that you would give us all the courage, the strength, and the word for all to follow your lead wherever you may lead us. I thank you for our, our friends from, from Atlanta that are here today. I pray that you bless them and, and, uh, and just help Jules. The, the week go good for them. I know they have some things going on, and we just, we just pray that, that it all is going to come out into our favor, in, into Jules' favor, and that, uh, you know, we just, we just love them so much. So, Father... As we get ready to eat and to fellowship and to just to continue to worship you, um, thank you. Just thank you. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.